The Tao of Self-Confidence, episode 130. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of courageous women finding their inner journey to self-confidence five days a week. Want to learn how you can change your inner beliefs and attitudes? Download a free copy of the ebook by visiting the Tao of Self-Confidence.com. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have an amazing lady who's all the way from Australia. She is known as the Naked Coach, and you know she's here today to share her story on self-confidence. And without further ado, I want to introduce you to Nina Concepcion. So Nina, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hi. Yes, I'm doing really well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. (laughs) That's good. All right, so I'm a uh, mentor or coach speaker, and I'm also in the process of writing my book at the moment as well. So what I do is I help people be more of themselves and be able to express who they really are in whatever it is that they do. I do have uh, my background is in sales, so I was in real estate for a couple years. So that's where I like to specialize in, also because it's it's a male dominated industry, any any sorts of sales industry. So I really want to help empower women to be able to step into their power and their own confidence and being able to be themselves in whatever role that they choose to be in. Awesome. And I love that message that you have because it's true, right? I mean, you know, I read this article that, you know, women aren't as aggressive in sales as men are because we're still being judged as like, if we do that, we're too aggressive and we're not ladylike. And, you know, it's all mm. it's all crap. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> we should be able yeah. we should be able to go out there and do it. And to be honest, women are more, are probably better saleswomen than men, right? Because we know, you know, we can feel what the person's feeling, and we can be more personable with them. So, you know, if ladies are out there still afraid of doing that, I mean, don't be right because it's inside yeah, of us. <laughs> exactly. Like even uh, my my mentor when I was in real estate, my boss who trained me, he said to me, women actually make better salespeople because of that fact. So we're more we're naturally more empathetic. We're more nurturing. Um, we can, you know, sales is just an a, emotional transaction. It's a transfer of energy and emotion. So generally, women are able to tap into that more. So yeah, I completely agree with you. Awesome. Love it. And and Nina, what's your cultural background? I'm a Filipino. I was born in the Philippines, but my parents moved to Australia when I was about one. And I'm 26 now, and I've grown up in Australia, but I'm moving to Bali in a couple of weeks. So, but yeah, but my, my heritage is Filipino. Awesome. Bali's still one of my, like, list of places to go. So hopefully when I go to Asia, that's I'm going to be able to, to do that. So it should yeah. be fun, fun times. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Bali's definitely got a different sort of energy to it. Sweet. Can't wait. And um, yeah. <laughs> what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? I think my favorite self-confidence quote would be, oh, I've got so many. <laughs> I think it would be, don't let anyone tell you that you that you can't do something. Because a lot of the time, a lot of people cannot have a bigger vision of you if they don't have a, that vision of themselves. So that means the majority of people aren't going to be able to have the same vision that you have. So you know, it's, it's, I think it's important to keep in mind that whatever it is that you want to do, as long as you want to do it, keep that in mind and don't let anyone stop your, hinder your confidence or your dreams of wanting to do something bigger. That's a great quote. And, you know, th- to the people who don't believe in you or tell you you can't do it, it's also kind of a reflection of themselves. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, it, it's really important that you have to focus on your own strengths, your own your own abilities and just go out there and do it because when they see you in action, and it also gives them like a little belief in themselves to just start doing whatever it takes to get to their dreams and goals. So great. Quote. Exactly. Great quote. Yeah. And thanks for sharing that. And, you know, in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? I would define self-confidence as having the courage and having the ability to be able to express who you are without, I don't think it's necessarily not having in mind what other people will think of you because it's the natural thing to be thinking that, but not letting what other people are thinking or what you think other people are thinking stop you from doing what you want to do and being who you are. 
Yes, I really believe that too. Because, you know, a lot of people de- define themselves as the perception of others, right? Mm, and, yeah. Which is totally not true, right? I mean, I, I was reading the story about Oprah, how she got fired from being an, a TV news anchor, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and they're like, you'll never, they're like, you'll never make it on TV. So imagine if Oprah listened to that person who said, you'll never make it on TV. She would never be where she is today. A billionaire has her own TV network and exactly everything else under her belt, right? So, I mean, I love that definition. I totally agree with that. And, you know, we have to stop letting other people's perception of us stop us from what we're doing. So great definition. And, you know, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Oh, well, it's been such an interesting journey. I've had a lot of people ask me literally in the last few weeks, you know, how did you get to where you are now? How did you get into coaching? How did you get into all this, like the lifestyle that I have now? And it's it's been so many, like if I think of almost like an intersection, so you're at a fork in a road and then it comes to a why, but I've had so many of those moments that it's been a lot of different things that has constantly helped me to build my confidence. So, you know, if I go back to one of the very early stages, I feel like, how was I before? I would, I was probably living a lot from fear and living a lot, living a lot of my life from, I don't know, it's, it's almost like it doesn't make sense to me now, <laughs> but it's, it's, I, I don't think I kept in mind back then that we've got a limited amount of time in this lifetime. And I was kind of just hoping that my life would change or that something would come in and change it. And I think I was living from a sense of hope as opposed to a sense of faith that everything will work my way as long as I trust myself. I think we all go through that, right? We we're like waiting for a savior. I mean, I was guilty of it, Mm -hmm. right? I'm just like, if I go to this, this is totally going to change my life. And then like (laughs) two days later, it's back to normal. I'm like, that did not work. What the hell's going on? Right. And, and, yeah. and, we, and we all do that, right? We all like, I mean, it's just it's it's natural to us because we've been ingrained so much that, you know, we're just supposed to wait for life to happen and not make life happen. Right. Mm, so, yeah. So, you know, I mean, what was that time in your life when you realized, you know, it's up to you to just take control? You're in charge of your own life and just go out there and do it. Oh, there's been so many. Um, I think one of the biggest ones had to be when it, it scares me a little bit but it's going to be in my book, so I might as well mention it. But um, I was sexually abused when I was younger and no one knew except me. And when I decided at about 12 to tell my parents what had happened, it was the scariest thing that I had ever done up to date. Um, I feel like there's been scarier since then. But when I did that and I told my parents, I was depressed and I just got to a point where I was like, I can't continue living like this. Like I would intentionally hurt myself because I, I just, I was in so much pain that I wanted, I wanted the pain to be external instead of internal. And I just, I was like, nothing's going to change unless I do something about it. And I can't keep this to myself anymore because I feel like I'm dying inside. So I knew that it had had to be up to me to be able to take a stand and to be able to let my parents know how I was feeling and why I was feeling this way instead of getting angry at them all the time or playing the victim and always having being able to say, you don't understand me, you don't know what I'm going through. And and it causes a, a sense of isolation. So I find the more that I'm able to actually, you know, be honest, be myself and actually m- move in the direction that I want for my life, it's, it's a lot more empowering as opposed to waiting for life to change. Well, thanks for sharing that, um, that part of your life. I mean, you know, a lot of women, you know, there, there's women out there who experience the same or similar situations, but they're too scared to, to talk about it because, you know, some of them feel ashamed. Some, some of them feel like it's their fault when it's not, right? I mean, yeah. the more we voice out things like this, you know, the more women can come up and stand up for themselves and take charge of their own life. And, you know, especially you at, at 12, like nobody thinks about that at 12, right? And yeah. for you to make that powerful decision like it, it's amazing right because then that's when the magic happens you know you you, st- you you tell your parents the truth and you you know stop living this life where it's like you're waiting for life to happen you just realize I, you know in order for this to happen I have to make that decision so you know after that that um, moment in your life what's your life like now oh my goodness I think every, I, I believe a lot of things in life are like a muscle you know intuition I believe is a muscle the more you listen to yourself the stronger it gets I also believe courage is a muscle uh, and self-confidence is also, for me, a big muscle. And I found that when you tackle the biggest thing in your life that scares you the most, 
everything else starts to get easier. The, the challenges get bigger and, you know, there are more challenging things that come. But because you've started building that muscle and you've tackled the biggest demon or the biggest, um, you know, battle that you're having, it gives you a sense of confidence that you can't really explain. So because that was the biggest thing in my life at that time, that was the scariest thing that was going on with me. The fact that I told my parents, it literally, the, the next thing I remember was, I'd never felt more myself after that. Like, yes, there was pain and yes, there was crying and yes, there was grieving and all that kind of stuff. But after I healed from that, I've really been able to make that situation into something that empowers me. So because of what's happened, I'm not someone who gives into peer pressure. I'm not someone who does, you know, synthetic drugs. I'm not someone who goes out and gets super pissed every single weekend. Like it, I've been able to build on my strength and my character and my confidence from that situation and also the way that I've responded to that situation. I really like another quote. It says, it's not what happens to you, it's how you respond to it. I love it. And it's true, right? I mean, we all go through obstacles, challenges, dark times in our life, but it's all about how we react to it that matters the most, right? You know, people feel like, Oh, I'm the only one, you know, You like you said, you don't understand what I'm going through, but there's people out there who have similar situations and is able to come out of it. So, I mean, if it's possible for one person, it's possible for anybody. So exactly. Thanks for sharing that. And you're welcome. Nina, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence or has a similar situation that you, you went through. What would be that one tip you would give to her? I think the one tip, um, can I, can I give two? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) The first one I think would be to talk to someone about it. Talk to somebody who you trust and who's, you know, who's important in your life because it's so important. Um, I believe to, to have that support. The second one I think is to take every day as it comes. Just say one day at a time, one day at a time. Because I remember when I was depressed, I thought the whole world was going to end. It was like I was just waiting for my death. And I just thought that every day was going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. But it really does get better if you put in the work in pulling yourself out of that negativity. So if you just see one day at a time and just find something one day that you enjoy doing and that makes you smile, even just surrounding yourself with people who make you smile and that support you, that goes a really, really long way. Awesome. And love those tips. And it's true. A smile can like change a person's um, attitude, you know, energy, because, you know, it's it's such a simple and powerful thing. It just helps someone become happier. Yeah. You know, I I just remember one time I was at the airport and you know how sometimes there's like this long lineup, right? And you're like, oh, when's it? When when am I going to get my turn or when can I get through this line? And there's this guy who's like in the baggage claim, you know, and he's just like singing and happy and just <laughs> full of life. And because he's so because he's so happy, everyone else was just, you know, their moods instantly change and waiting in yes. line was like more enjoyable instead of like, oh, so, you know, it, yes. it makes a huge difference. And um, it Ni- does. And Nina, if our listeners want to get to know, you know, more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, so I've got um, Nina Concepcion is my Facebook name. It's also the name of my my public page. I've got my Instagram, which is hashtag Nina underscore K, the letter K and then the letter C. And I've also got my uh, website going up in the next couple of weeks. It's www.thenewnewview.com. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And our listeners, if, if you want to connect with Nina, you can also head on over to the com and search for Nina's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I really just want to thank Nina for taking the time to share her story with us. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. And listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us on another episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. Visit thetaoofselfconfidence.com for links to everything we chatted about today, as well as killer resources, gifts, and so much more. Subscribe to The Tao of Self-Confidence on iTunes or Stitcher to hear more stories of amazing women finding their inner journey to self-confidence.